Good morning, everybody, and thanks for watching. So today I'm going to talk, as I have before, on Psalm 139.16, because I think it's uh, one of many important scriptures that completely disprove human free will. And whenever I talk about human free will, it's... I believe important to define what that is because many people think that human free will is making choices so I always get um, some feedback from people that say oh I can choose to do this or I can choose to do that and they claim that as being free will but a choice is not free will a choice is something we do that's a result of who we are, the experiences that we've had, and what God has put in our lives, a combination of many things. So just because we choose doesn't mean that that choice is free. It's influenced by something. We're all influenced by many things. The ultimate influencer is God. So human choice does not prove human free will. Actually, Scripture says that human choice is a result of God's plan, and God determines what human beings will do, and then human beings make the choices that God has planned for them to make. Eventually, we all go through the experiences that God has planned for us to go through in order to give us the experiences we need to have the full measure of joy, character, and understanding of God when all are saved by Jesus Christ's death for sin, his entombment, and his resurrection, and through Christ's perfecting creation so that God can be all in all, as 1 Corinthians 15.28 says. It's all moving to that end and for that purpose. But Psalm 139.16 Your eyes saw my embryo, and my days, all of them, were written upon your scroll. The days they were formed, when there was not one of them. So, if God wrote each and every day of our lives in his book, then how are we free to go against what was written in that book? I mean, have has anybody ever had a book, their favorite book that they've read, and then put it on the shelf for a week and then came back later and they read the book again and something changed in the book? No, the book is the same. And if the book was written beforehand, before you were, say, even born, then how would you have a say in what happens in that book? And, you know, oh, that's a stretch. And it's not a stretch. We have to take God at his word and what his word says. Here it says, All my days, all of them were written upon your scroll, the days they were formed when there was not one of them. So not only did God set in stone or write in his scroll everything that would happen that enough would disprove human free will and that God has planned each and every day but it goes a step further it says that all these days every day of our life was formed by God before there was one of them so before our first day before we were ever born God planned out each and every day. So that proves that if everything was planned out up until our last day, then our free will choice cannot have an effect on what happens in any of those days because the last day was already planned out and every day from the last day to the first has been planned out before there was one of them. So everything that happens in that time frame of our lives has been decided before we were even born. So that proves that 
the choices we make and what happens to us in those days is a result of God's hand. And we are not the ones creating by our human free will and determining what happens in our lives. Our choices are a result of God. They are not a free will action that causes God to react. And this scripture, along with many more scripture, proves this. And, you know, the attempt to explain this away, the need for people to have a free will, to, I think the main reason is to have that human pride where they say they did something in order to earn God or get salvation when someone else didn't. And they think that somehow honors God because they have reacted to God and they have done something to deserve salvation when other people have not. But it's the greatest slap in the face to God because it takes him off his throne and now makes human free will the place or the subjector of God that God has to react to when scripture clearly says that God does the planning. God gives to us life and breath and all and he gives it to all. That God is the potter and we are the clay. He is the subjector. He is the placer and our decisions and what we do is a result of God. See because God's not a human being and people always treat him when they come up with this human free will as a human being. Well, if a human being did that, they would be controlling. Well, God's not a human being. Oh, if God loves us, he'd, he'd give us this choice. Oh, God gave us free will because he loves us. He wants us to choose him. And that is just nonsense. Because God is God. And God controls everything. He has a special relationship with his creatures that other humans do not have with, say, another human being or other creatures. And that God is the creator. And he does everything. Nobody can do anything without an influence in their life. Adam and Eve were influenced. The people who crucified Jesus Christ were influenced. The, the Apostle Paul was influenced by being blinded by the glorified Christ. The Apostles were influenced by Jesus coming and choosing them. So it is impossible for any human being to go through life without being influenced by something all the time. And who is in control of those influences? God is in control of those influences. Where you're born, who your parents are, what experiences you have, your health, your inmost being. These scriptures here in Psalm 139.13 says, For you yourself achieved the making of my innermost being. Our innermost being determines a lot of our choices and what we are. God created and then our DNA our like I said before our experiences all this plays in and if you're going to say that God is in control of nothing well you would have to say that if you believe in human free will because God either controls everything or he controls nothing because every influence is in God's hands. And if you don't think that, then you have to say, well, I guess none of it is. But scripture clearly says that everything is in God's hands. And God does everything. Because these big events that happen, if you're saying that God is in control of them, but he's not in control of these little details. Well, the big events are all made up of these little details. You know, look at Judas, who was, it was prophesied a thousand years, 
hundreds, thousands, whatever, before he was actually born, that he was going to do what he was going to do. Well, if God planned that, and Scripture says that it was going to come to pass, so it had to happen that way, so God planned it. This is how it was going to go down. Jesus himself told Judas to do what he was going to do. So all the little details leading up to that. Think about Judas's parents. If something would have happened to them and Judas would have never been born, then God would have turned out to be a liar and that scripture would have been proven false. But every little detail along the way, Judas had to be born in a specific area. He had to live a specific life. And if one detail is off, then these big events don't come to pass. So if God is in charge of these big events, he's in charge of every little detail getting to that event. But uh, I'm digressing a bit here, so I want to get back to what I'm talking about. Psalm 139.16 and people trying to explain this way. I had one pastor I brought this scripture verse up to, and he said that this wasn't talking about everyone. It was just talking about Adam, this Psalm 139. And, you know, God is not a respecter of people. If he, if he does this for one human, he does it for all. I mean... You think the psalmist here, for you achieved the making of my in, innermost being, it's just to this person writing here? David or whoever's writing this? It's just to him? We don't think that God does this, forms the inmost being for every human being? Of course he does. And then the, the pastor that said, this is talking about Adam here, well, verse 13 says for you achieved the making of my innermost being you overshadowed me in my mother's belly that's talking about Adam well Adam didn't have a mother as we recall so that's just a side note on why that Baptist preacher would say that obviously it's not Adam but my point is this is talking about all humanity so your eyes saw my embryo in my days all of them were written upon your scroll the days they were formed when there was not one of them so take into account everything that happens in our days I don't think there's any of us that have gone through a full day where there wasn't some sort of evil doesn't have to be major, but at least some sort of minor evil that we experienced or bad things that we experienced. You know, sin, poor choices, being mistreated. You know, obviously some days have more than others. But if God planned each and every day of our lives, then he would have had to have factored in the evil and all the things that happen to us that cause us to make choices and live the lives that we live. So everything that happens, even our, our death, if God is in control of our death, he would have to control what's happening in each and every day of our lives because otherwise death to us might come as a surprise. If God doesn't control every little detail, if, oh, God's not in control of whether we live or leave our house at 10.01 as opposed to 10.02, but because we left at 10.01, we get in a car accident and get killed. Or, you know, this person makes a choice that they're leaving and they have to escape a situation and they come across, whether they're driving or fleeing the scene of a crime, and they somehow put us in danger every one of those little decisions right down to the very second millisecond matters and if it's not in God's control then what happens as a result of that is also not in God's control 
So if God controls whether we live or die, then he knows every detail that could affect that outcome. I know I'm getting deep into the philosophy of not having a, a free will, so I don't want to get too much into that. I'm already at 15 minutes. So I'm just going to wrap up here and speak this verse again. Because those that think they have a free will really take God off of his throne and everything that they have every promise now that God gives is contingent upon the God really the small g God of free will if Jesus Christ died for sin was dead and was resurrected and all these promises that come to you based on what Christ did but if you have to make a free will choice in order to get these gifts, then everything that Christ has done and everything that God has done is contingent and subject to your free will. And there's nothing worse, nothing more diabolical than putting free will on the throne to the point where God has to react to that free will. Now, I'm not saying that we don't make choices for God. We do. But those choices are a result of God. Acts 17.26 says that God gives to all life, breath, and all. So everything that we have, the choices that we make, are not created by us. They are created by the Creator and planned out by the Creator before we were even born. And as we're born and live out our lives, we live out the plan of God and we make the choices that He has planned for us to make. This verse in 139.16 goes hand in hand with Romans chapter 9, which I'm just going to touch on here. For not, this is uh, Romans chapter 9, 11 through 13, Paul's writing here. For not as yet being born, so not being born yet, nor putting into practice anything good or bad, that the purpose of God may be remaining as a choice, not out of acts, this is God's choice, but of him who is calling, it was declared to her that the greater shall be slaving for the inferior, according as it is to written, Jacob I love, yet Esau I hate. So God didn't hate Esau, but he chose Jacob over Esau. And I'm not going to go through that whole thing when Jacob stole the birthright, deceived Esau, and all that. Actually, but all those details, if God planned for this to happen before they were even born, then all those details leading up to God's plan had to be in God's control as well. But in the short version here, before Jacob and Esau were even born, and then it goes, Paul goes to that length to say before they did anything good or bad, because people always want to say that our destiny is determined by the good or bad things that we do. Whether it's accepting Christ or living a good life or coming to some sort of choice. They always say that what we get in this life or in the next life, our destiny is determined by the good or bad things that we do. That's why Paul goes to lengths here to say, for as not yet being born, they weren't even born, nor putting into practice anything good or bad. So this is before they had a say in anything. That the purpose of God may be remaining as a choice. God's choice. Not out of our acts. But of him who is calling. This goes hand in hand with Psalm 139.16. In that before we we're even born. Before we do anything good or bad. God 
So it may be remaining as his choice, not out of our acts, has planned every detail of our life before we were even born. And he wrote down and formed all of our days before one of them came to be. So every action within those days is not a creation of ourselves that we give to God, but is a creation of God that we live through in real time. Every choice that we make, everything that we do or don't do, is planned by God. And I'll end it with 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 that says this grace that we have I'm going to go there real quick I use this example all the time when people say that you have to make a choice for God which you do to have Aeonian salvation you do have to make a choice for God but where does this choice come from where does it originate nobody doubts that you make choices and you do certain things and don't do other things. But where do those choices originate? Do they come from you and you present it to God? Or do they come from God and you live out God's plan? Understanding the difference to those two things is essential in understanding God or not. 2 Timothy 1.9 Who saves us and calls us with a holy calling, not in accord with our acts, but in accord with his purpose and the grace which is given to us in Christ Jesus before times aeonian. So we're saved by grace through faith. And we're given this before times aeonian. So how are you making a free will choice when God has already planned before, not only before you were born, but before time began, he had planned that you would have this grace and have this faith. If he had already planned it, then when you make this faith choice, it's not something that originates from you. It's something that God has planned and then he works out the circumstances for you to do exactly what he has written for you to do before you were born, before times Aeonian, before time even began. So everything is planned by God. And yes, we move through life and we make choices and we have emotions and we go through the experience of it all because we're relative beings and we're creatures. And we learn and we're shaped and we have these experiences all in order to bring us to a closer realization and joy of God when all of this runs its course and at the end game, at the end of these ages, when God through Christ perfects every one of his creatures, we will all have the deepest joy and appreciation of God because of the experiences that he put us through. But make no mistake, it's God that does everything. Thanks for watching.